Hey there, I'm Kat, this is a cat, and this is Bruiser Reviews. So, if you watched my last vlog, you may have noticed this little man just uh, chilling around. Whoa, he's a bit excitable right now, so I'm going to put him down in a second. Um, but this is Cooper, and he's crazy. So, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I got a kitten. Um, yeah, it's very exciting times. I've had him for a couple of weeks now, and he's currently sitting underneath the tripod, so if I look down in abject terror, it's probably because I think he's going to knock over the camera or something like that. Because you're mental! I should make you guys aware that, actually, I film by having my tripod balanced on my sofa, because there's just no other room, and uh, if he goes on the sofa, then you'll jiggle, and you're just going to have to deal with the jiggling. So it feels like it's been forever since I did like an actual sit down book video in front of my bookshelves. That's because it has been forever. My computer died, I had a whole thing, so yeah. I'm here, I'm back, we're here for the June wrap up. Without further ado, because I actually did read 13 books this month, I am not entirely sure how, it was a crazy month. I think it was because I was taking part in the TBR readathon and I was taking part in Summer Weenathon, so yeah, lots of books got read. So I'm going to get right into it. The first book that I read was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, and that was part of the TBR readathon, which was reading a. The challenge was to read a book that was outside of your comfort zone, and this was most definitely out of my comfort zone. I don't read this sort of book, I'm not a big contemporary fan, but. I loved it. I really enjoyed it actually. I found that the issues being discussed were like really intense and really deep and I, I've talked more about it in um Ow! Oh motherfucker Ow! Oh motherfucker Just clawed my leg because I'm sat on something he usually likes to stand on. But really? Did you need to do that? So basically The Hate You Give, I'm pretty sure everybody knows about this and there's a trailer for the film out now as well and I just kind of felt like I needed to read it. It's one of those that everyone says is so important and I agree, I think it was really important. Like I've since had um, feedback that it's potentially not the best advocate for these type of issues and there are better representations of that out there. Steph's Rum Book Talk actually gave me another suggestion for something that she thinks is a better representation of these type of issues than this and I'm definitely up for giving it a go so you will see that on a TBR coming up. The next book that I read was actually an ebook, and that was Our Doris by Charles Heathcote. Charlie is actually a booktuber, and I'll link his channel down below because you guys should check him out, he's so funny. And this book was just hilarious, it made me laugh so much. And like, you know when you really need to laugh? Yeah, that book gave me exactly what I needed, I can't wait to pick up the sequel because it was just brilliant. So Our Doris is about... Um, like 70-ish old woman called Doris Copeland who is just nuts. Doris wants to show people that she is the model of society, that she has the best house, she has the best garden, she is just the best, she has the best family, all that sort of thing. The novel actually centres on Doris trying to get the house number five in the town's garden viewing the like best gardens around the town. Oh my god guys, the words are failing me because it's like so hot and I'm actually melting. Like England's having a heat wave and there's no such thing as aircon here and I'm just dying under the light. <sighs> so yes, Doris is trying to have house number five which is the best placement for a house and she's trying to be everything and she gets into so much crazy happenings and they're just hilarious. I know so many people like Doris because I'm actually from like near where the story's set and I'm like wow. I know those people. <laughs> they are very realistic. Anyway, if you're looking for a hilarious book with just absolutely hilarious characters then I would go straight for that book because it's so worth checking out. Read it. It's great. 
Next up, I finally finished the Grisha trilogy. So I read Ruin and Rising. That was part of the TBR readathon again for me because that was, uh, I don't know what it was. I think it was a book with a beautiful cover, which I do love the cover. And like, I'm so happy I read this book. I was, I was in such a book hangover afterwards. Like anyone who has like spent any time with me knows that I love the Dark Thing so much. I couldn't tell you why. I just love him. He's like one of my fave characters just in general in like all the books and I love him. So to finally have this conclusion, also the very very end, I would say that for pff, the previous two books that have been like oh, that's a shit end, I'd hate that. I read this book and then I was like, oh, I really like that ending, it's so good, I'm so traumatised by everything that's happened, I just want to <laughs> So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this book, I thought it ended really well, and I'm just so happy about it. I'm just, I, I love it so much, it's definitely one of my top books of the year so far. I'm putting off reading Six of Crows because I don't want to compare them because I've heard that people tend to like one or the other more so than liking them both so I want to give it a lot of space and time before I start Six of Crows so then I can give them both my full appreciation because let's face it, Six of Crows doesn't have the Darkling in it and I'm here for the Darkling because I just love it. Next up I read The Goddess Test by Amy Carter. Basically I'm obsessed with Hades and Persephone, it is one of my all-time favourite relationship type things, even though I know the the dodge dodginess is there because obviously <laughs> the original myth is not exactly lovey-dovey. Um, I like people's retellings of Hades and Persephone and if it's done well it can be done really well and like I, I'm constantly seeking out that Hades Persephone like romance type thing. So basically the goddess test is <sighs> A modern day retelling of that myth. I don't really want to give anything away so this is my problem with this book because a lot of it lies in mystery. Hades, the lord of the underworld, is going to lose his kingdom if he does not find someone to replace his wife. Now I don't remember the main character of this... Her name's Kate. So if Kate can fill in for Persephone by passing all of these tests then she will save the underworld, you know, save Hades' job, save him from passing on. So, you know, it was okay, I didn't like, I didn't particularly love it, it was like, alright, okay, bit cliche, but it was very fan fiction-y. I wonder if it was a fan fiction, I'm not really sure. I read a lot of Hades and Persephone fan fiction back in the day and um, this feels like it could have been at home there, but if you guys have got any Hades and Persephone recommendations, please throw them at me because they will stick to my face like glue. I'm going to group these next two books together because I'm aware that this is going to be a painfully long video if I don't. I read The City of Lost Souls and City of Heavenly Fire this month. Yes, I read these two chunky ass books and I am done with the Mortal Instruments series for the first time in my life. Finally finished it. Now I'm going to take these one book at a time. City of Lost Souls, I did not enjoy. I kind of thought, meh, some of this stuff could have happened in a different book. I'm so done with the, is Jace good, is Jace bad, but blah, 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 I don't give a fuck about Jace. I don't give a fuck about Clary. Magnus and Alec drama is not what I'm here for. I'm here for Magnus and Alec love, please. Thank you very much. That's what we all want, is it not? <sighs> I, like, I've got some problems with Sebastian too, because, uh, um, but like, which is weird because he's usually the sort of character that I think I should like, like see previous love for Darkling, but I just don't, I don't, I don't. That's all I've really got to say about this book, I just didn't really like it and I feel like part of it could have been condensed down the way that I feel like book two and book four are just kind of meh and they could have been squished into other books. You could have had four books instead of six or like three books, which would be nice. So City of Heavenly Fire this big chunky chunky 700 page book, 700 something or other. I actually did enjoy it, I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. This um, was part of the TBR readathon, both of these were, they were books that have been on my shelves for a long time and I part of a series that I needed to finish. 
I really liked how all the characters intertwined. Obviously, the Magnusness. <laughs> I just love Magnus. He's just the best part of this entire series. I had some problem with some characters in vulnerabilities again. Like I'm, I'm not going to be that spoiler girl. I'm not. Maybe I'll do a review of the entire Mortal Instruments series so that I can like get, get off my chest the entire problems that I have with some of these characters in these books and some of the things that happen. But you know, overall, I felt like it had a, like a, it rounded off well and. I actually liked a lot of the characters that were introduced in here. I really liked Emma and I really liked Julian and the whole, like, that whole family. I really enjoyed that and I'm quite glad that they're going to be in the Dark Artifices and we're abandoning Clary and Jace forever because I never want to see them again because I'm so, I hate them so much with a fury. So I'm glad that their story is done and we can just bye bye, bye bye now. Please don't say they come back, I don't, I don't want to see them again. So, give this one 4 out of 5 stars. Overall, it was okay. Mortal Instruments is alright. Could got some problems, but yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad I've read it and I can talk about it now. And at least I know what happens, so I don't have to like run and hide every time someone get, pulls this book out on a video. Next up, we have my favourite book of the month, and that is The Book of M by Peng Shepherd. So, this book I got as an ARC from NetGalley, and Oh my god, I'm just so glad I'm gonna go on and on about this book for so long because it's so good. So the book of M is set in like an apocalyptic future where people started to lose their shadows. So what happens when you lose your shadow is that you also start to lose your memories. It will be little things at first like you forgot where, what colour your shoe was or like you forgot where you left your wedding ring. And then you start forgetting bigger things like how to breathe, how to, or not to go in the fire because badness happens. You just like people just walk into flames and stuff. So there is another part of this where the shadow losing the shadow means that you can do magic, but you trade memories for magic and like a whole lot of craziness ensues. We follow a bunch of really diverse characters who honestly make me feel so much and like I'm gonna stop talking about it now because I just go on and on forever about this book. The last thing I will say is that near the very end of this book there was something that happened that literally made me exclaim out loud. I was sat watching the football with my mum and dad and I just went no! Oh my god! And But like honestly the emotion that was so there I was like no I can't believe that has just happened what that's like my brain exploded and it was just so good. I can't recommend it enough. It's actually out now and I think that everyone should read it. The next book that I read was The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovich and I really liked that book. I kind of felt like I was reading fan fiction but in a good kind of way. So it's like a bunch of characters shoved into a situation and like they just weirdly work. None of them are nice people. Like a lot of them are assholes and I like I kind of like it. It's just like, I can't, it's, you can't look away, you just need to keep reading. I need to get the next one because I just really enjoyed it. It's basically about a bunch of people who play this sport called Exe, which is like a mix of lacrosse and hockey, I think. But basically, it's just really intense. I don't like sport books, why do I like this book? But I just did, it's just I really like how it's written and like the type of characters that are in it even though you know I probably shouldn't but I like it. Then we have Coraline by Neil Gaiman so I read this and actually the book of M as part of Summer Weenathon. <sighs> this was the group book for Summer Weenathon and I just did not enjoy it. It was way too juvenile for me. I watched the film previously and I really enjoyed the film. I thought it was way better at doing creepier things and the book just seemed to be just like oh creepy thing move on creepy thing move on creepy thing move on and that was done and I just was not there for it guys I didn't enjoy it and the second Neil Gaiman book that I've not enjoyed so point me at a Neil Gaiman book that you think that I'm going to enjoy more please because I need to know if he's just not an author that is for me. Then we're going to move on to the David Gemmell section of this month because you'll know I'm a whore for David Gemmell books. I just can't help myself. So I read Hero in the Shadows and Quest for Lost Heroes. 
So uh, I don't really want to necessarily go into this because there's spoilers for other books in these ones, but these are both heroic fantasy books. This one has a lot of demons and crazy monster things in, but you do also need to have read Waylander and Waylander 2 before you read this one. And this one is basically like a bunch of old warriors who have been in a, a successful battle and they're famous and they're kind of past it now and then they go on just a quest to find this woman who's been taken by slavers and it's just really good. I like, I really like it. And but before you read this one, you have to have read Legend and King Beyond the Gate. So if you want to get to these, read all the other ones. Please read all the David Gemmell books. Give them, read them all. Tell me about it, please. The end of this one made me cry a little bit. And like the end of this one didn't make me cry, but it made me go, oh. so yeah, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed reading both of them. It's about time that I got to read these two. I am nearing the end of my Draenei rereads, guys. I think I've got like three left and then and I'm done. Which is going to be sad, so... Mm. Okay, so the last two books that I read this month are graphic novels, because I kind of did a lot of noveling towards the end of the month, particularly with City of Heavenly Fire, because uh, that was like huge and like weirdly daunting. So I actually picked up Pretty Deadly Volume 1 and Volume 2. Now these are kind of westerns. I want to say this one's a western and this one's kind of a war book but I just I was kind of confused by them to be honest. I'm not entirely sure what I read. This one kind of reminded me vaguely of like basically I just love things with like King of the Underworld or King of Darkness type people. It's just how I roll. And then this one was set in the war. And there's like some really like grotesque looking imagery but it's also kind of pretty and you can't look away and like the story like leads you on far enough and you're like okay I'll go with this. I don't want to spoil the story because they're rather small. And okay so we just had like a little five minute break because my camera decided to die. It basically said it was on full battery and then it decided that it wasn't. So, uh, yeah, I think I was saying that basically I love uh, stories about like the King of Darkness and like, oh my god, you're crazy! He's fine. I think I was saying that I love stories about the King of Darkness and yeah, basically just give me that. I love the Darkling, I love Hades Persephone, sort of things like so. Of course I was gonna love that. Uh, so, moving on, I watched two movies this month at the cinema. I watched Hereditary, which is a horror film and I'm not going to tell you too much about because I feel like it definitely spoils something. It's basically just about a family and uh, some bad things happen to them after the grandmother dies. Um, yeah, I didn't like it. I was confused a lot of the time. I didn't really couldn't really tell you what was happening. I kind of feel like if they had taken it in one direction then it would have made a lot more sense and it would have been a lot better and more effective as a horror film because there were some quite effective like scenes that were uncomfortable and like that sort of thing it's not really a jump scary type horror um but they took it in another route at the end and i hated the ending and um i think it kind of invalidated all the things that they'd set up and like all the cleverness that could have been there but you know Oh well. So the other film that i watched i actually just watched this morning and that is jurassic world shit. It was like, they were like, oh, you like Jurassic Park, the original? You like dinosaurs? Let me just stomp on your childhood and kill all these dinosaurs. Could you not? Please? It was like they were trying to f make a different sort of film to the Jurassic Park films. The beauty of Jurassic Park is that you have like the majesty of the dinosaurs and you get to see why they are so beautiful and why why someone would actually want to bring them back. They're not just like killing machines, there are like, you know, there's a fascination around them. But this film was like, let's just kill some dinosaurs and then manufacture another man-made one because why do we keep doing that? That's stupid. That's scary enough. The original ones are. Why are we making new dinosaurs? Just have real dinosaurs, please. Please. Honestly, it was really bad and I laughed a lot of the way through the film. I was like, well that wouldn't happen, they'd be dead by now, uh, all these things, but it was just kind of sad. 
I, I didn't enjoy seeing dinosaurs die for no reason. Tell a story about like how great dinosaurs are, please. Honestly guys, my battery died again and I just, I can't, I can't wait for it to go again. I was so close to the end. I filmed it like three times because the battery kept dying and it just, I just, I just can't. So I'm sorry for the quality downgrade. I'm literally just filming this little sign off now and um, this video will be over. So you don't have to put up with this for very long. See, look, I am melting and like, I can't even form words anymore. These are the books that I read this month, all 13 of them. And the two movies that I went to see in the cinema. Um, if you've got any thoughts, comments on any of those things, I'd love to have a discussion with you guys. Please let me know down in the comments. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!